Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Multi-Container Networking Automation and Visibility Using SDN Fabrics. My name is Judy Ash, and I'm the Head of Corporate Marketing here at Big Switch, and will be today's, your host for today's webinar. Joining me is Prashant Gandhi, our Vice President of Products and Strategy, Donna Pathibat, our Principal Technical Marketing Engineer, and Sarat Kumar, a member of our technical staff. Um, we are super excited about today's topic. Uh, it's a very hot topic in the industry. Lots of you are interested in what's happening, and we certainly have a lot to share today. Um, as we go through the presentation, please feel free to ask questions using the Q&A box on your webinar dashboard. We love to answer, we love to get questions from the audience and make this as interactive and interesting as possible. If you're watching this in the video uh, rebroadcast or on demand, and you have questions on an upcoming webinar topic that you would like our panelists to address, please go to bigswitch.com slash webinars and submit a question using the link provided. We've also provided a couple of handouts for this session, and you can download them from the handouts tab on the dashboard. There are three, uh, one of our uh, big monitoring fabric data sheets, the Big Cloud Fabric data sheet, and uh, a guide to trying Big Switch Labs for free. And we'll tell you more about that at the end of the end of the session. We have a full agenda for today's webinar, so let's get started. Prashant? Perfect. Thank you, Judy. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we are going to really focus today on how network is uh, can be automated and provide full visibility to container workloads. And what we'll do is we'll go through um, an overview of containers, the, the whole paradigm, uh, what's, uh, what's so exciting about containers, and then talk about what are the challenges uh, in containers, specifically related to networking. And then uh, look at how we can address these challenges in, uh, that uh, arise in networking uh, through uh, software-defined networking and uh, open networking solutions. We'll walk through the plugin architectures for containers and how uh, it can be leveraged uh, to rapidly develop capabilities for network automation, network visibility, network troubleshooting uh, for container workloads. And specifically, when we have multi-container uh, orchestration environments, such as uh, uh, Docker environment, um, you know, Kubernetes, um, Red Hat, OpenShift, um, Mesosphere environment. So, Variety of container environments uh, and orchestration um, are available. And the question is, how does a network, which is a platform, which is a shared resource, can interact with a variety of container uh, orchestration systems and provide a, uh, a consistent operational experience, automation experience? Effectively, how do we make the network um, you know, behave and operate at the speed of containers? Uh, and so we'll, we'll go through that, and then we'll look at, finally, a deployment workflow and a demonstration of how we can achieve, rapidly achieve automation and visibility with a very specific container uh, networking environment. So with that, let's jump in. Uh, containers, as uh, many of you uh, uh, should already know or would already know, are a new atomic unit of, uh, for applications. We've all been used to you know, applications running on bare metal servers, um, and for, for the last decade or so, uh, applications running on, on virtual machines. And, and most of uh, um, many customers' environments today, certainly in enterprise and, and service provider environments, um, the uh, applications are um, mostly on virtual machines. Uh, servers infrastructure is 70-plus uh, percent virtualized. So what is the difference between uh, a unit of compute which is virtual machine versus a unit of compute, which is, uh, which is a container. And this diagram uh, provides that uh, uh, perspective that when we have a virtual machine, the guest OS um, is part of that virtual machine along with the application, and uh, it would need to run on a hypervisor environment. Container, on the other end, uh, does, not need, does not have the, uh, the guest OS uh, per container. And this makes the containers very lightweight. Uh, it also enables containers uh, to have much higher density. Um, but additional benefits here 
are really that the containers become uh, very uh, application and developer friendly. And why is that? Um, it turns out that with containers, um, one is able to run applications across multiple environments. You can develop it on, on your laptop, move it to servers uh, in your data center, uh, move it to cloud environments. And that ability to make the application portable through the container containerization is super useful. Uh, additionally, with this portability, one is able to now uh, have this uh, sort of almost nirvana-like um, um, environment for app application developers, which is how do I do continuous integration, and then how do I work with my uh, my um, IT teams, operations teams, so that we can do continuous deployment. I mean, this this has been uh, a major issue uh, in in terms of uh, rapidly deploying applications and and rapidly changing applications, um, and containers allow that that capability of doing continuous integration and continuous deployment, and primarily because of the portability characteristics uh, of the containers. So with that, um, you know, certainly uh, it's, it's not the fact that uh, you cannot have a synergistic relationship between containers and VMs. Uh, there are actually two models for deploying containers. The first model, as shown on the left part of the slide, is uh, containers in a VM. A VM is a well-understood uh, isolation unit for compute. Um, it has uh, well understood mature operational capabilities, serviceability capabilities, um, life cycle management uh, tools are available, and therefore there is uh, a fair bit of interest in running containers within a VM environment. It's a very valid deployment model. Um, when one does that, um, you would typically have some type of a network within the VM so that the containers within the VM interact with each other, shown here as an embedded vSwitch. And then, of course, you would have a, a switch on the host, uh, the hypervisor vSwitch, uh, to which uh, you know, multiple VMs are connected. The right-hand side is a, uh, is a model where containers are running on bare metal host, in which case uh, there is no VM. Containers are directly uh, deployed. Um, on a, on a host operating system, and, uh, and they are connected through a network. In this case, it's represented by host vSwitch or, or Linux Bridge or what, uh, what have you. Um, so the, the benefit here is certainly um, uh, you know, that VM level of isolation um, and uh, lifecycle management tools are, are uh, not there yet, and, and uh, uh, those tools are, are uh, being developed, are uh, going to be available over time. Uh, but certainly you get the uh, benefit of uh, performance and cost optimization. Our focus today is going to be the right-hand model containers on bare metal uh, Linux environments. Now, what is, uh, you know, how are containers uh, helping applications be more distributed? And so traditional model has been uh, that you would deploy or develop a monolithic application. And here is an uh, example uh, of an application, you know, taxi calling service. And uh, the, the green hexagonal on the left-hand side is the application. That's one monolithic application consisting of a variety of services, uh, passenger management, notifications, payments, driver management, trip management, and so on. The right-hand side um, shows uh, the same application, but now um, has an opportunity where each of the services becomes its own atomic unit of operation that can be instantiated on a container and is interacting with other um, containerized microservices over a network. And so one can see that a, an application that was self-contained um, uh, did not have any additional interactions amongst its own components. It had interactions outside itself, but not within its own compo components over a network is now exposed on, a, on the network and is interacting and therefore the traffic on the network is now increasing significantly. And, and we have always, we have seen this uh, phenomenon occur even when we went from bare metal to, to VMs where east-west traffic uh, jumped tremendously. And uh, containers, uh, one with high density of them on a server, and secondly because of the, uh, the opportunity to deploy applications through microservices, um, you know, even accentuates that, uh, that traffic, the east-west traffic on the network, to um, an order of magnitude more. 
So with that, let's kind of look at um, the differences between um, you know deploying VMs uh, versus deploying containers. Um, you have for the VMs, you know, one file system per VM. It takes you know a few seconds, uh, five to ten seconds to insta instantiate VMs. Um, your density is typically 25 VMs per server, 40 servers per rack. So approximately 1k um, VMs per rack. Sometimes uh, you know with uh, lighter weight VMs, one can go to even even more than that, uh, a few thousand uh, VMs per rack. Um, and uh, per server, you have a uh, you know a V switch. When it comes to containers, uh, they are sharing the uh, underlying uh, file system across containers. Um, so one one important difference. They are very lightweight and they can be uh, instantiated um, in seconds, in, in sub seconds, uh, and much much larger density as we talked about because of their lightweight nature. So the um, the ability of containers to be a lot more elastic, a lot more. Um, um, in addition to high density, ability for them to go up and down, um, you know, created and, and destroyed, that um, frequency is uh, uh, increased, you know, by an order of magnitude. You know, in terms of uh, the speed of instantiation, you know, uh, in terms of density, in terms of its life cycle, um, all of that uh, is uh, is an order of magnitude difference, and certainly. When they're deployed, you could have, you know, depending on the deployment model, uh, a single uh, virtual switch on the host or um, nested uh, virtual switches, as we earlier saw. So now let's kind of, uh, you know, come come back and see what kind of challenges or how would you deploy a network for containers? Because clearly, interaction among containers, and as we um, enter into cloud native applications and uh, applications that uh, implement microservices, what sort of network would be required for that? And so if we co come back to kind of the foundational elements of, of networking, we have a physical network, which is this is a, a leaf spine network where multiple racks of servers are connected with each other. And also external environments um, are connected through this network uh, so that you can also have uh, not just east-west traffic, among racks and servers, but also north-south traffic uh, within a container um, environment to to outside of it to interact with uh, users and other systems. There's virtual network. This is a network that is uh, resides in the host itself, in the server itself. Um, and additionally, um, as applications uh, are deployed, whether the form factor is a container or a bare metal or um, virtual machine one has a set of uh, infrastructure uh, needs. One of them is security. How do you secure this environment? Um, you know, we do that today uh, for existing applications and form factors, workload form factors. How does that extend to containerized environments? How does one provide micro-segmentation, uh, application layer uh, security? Um, so all of this become, become critical. And also load balancing because uh, you know, um, as traffic densities uh, increase or traffic demand increase, one needs to have uh, uh, one needs to load balance that traffic across um, multiple sets of containers. And so, uh, and there are other services, but at least these are sort of the foundational services that one would need to have as containers um, are deployed in in from from lab environment to production environment. Uh, now, in addition to this, operationally. You know the fact that we have so many containers and there's so much traffic and they go up and down so fast that the network needs to be uh, adapting to that rate of change, that uh, rapid rate of change. Um, and there's just not enough staff to be able to take every container and be able to manually, statically, you know, enable it on the network. Uh, what network needs to be able to do is to be zero touch really simple, uh, fully automated, so that when a container is instantiated, the network automatically gets configured. A full visibility, so when an application, whether it's a microservice application or any other application residing or packaged in a container, is interacting with another container or a virtual machine or potentially a database uh, somewhere on a physical server, 
um, if there is application outage, application performance issues, application response time issues, how, what kind of visibility can we get so that troubleshooting across uh, containers, container to container or container to any other environment can be, uh, can be done rapidly, issues can be resolved. Is it a network problem? Is it a host problem? Is it a virtual network problem? Is it an application or container problem? How do we isolate this rapidly? And then um, capabilities such as how do I monitor uh, the whole environment and, and do service chaining. So uh, very um, a set of capabilities that a network has hard time providing today, but are mandatory. I mean, almost necessary for um, for us to have uh, when deploying container environments. And you know, one thing that we have seen uh, with uh, uh, with networking is that as uh, cloud emerge leveraging OpenStack technology, uh, OpenStack-based private clouds, we saw you know, that the network had become the barrier to adoption of OpenStack. Uh, and, and why was that? It was the complexity of, uh, of what, what is called neutron networking and OpenStack, uh, you know, essentially layer three networking. Uh, you need to scale. It has to be resilient. Network is a shared resource. So um, you know, it has to be always up and running. It has to perform um, and scale. And, and of course, as we talked about, you know, visibility becomes very important because one has to troubleshoot and has to ensure that application performance is, is maintained to the service level agreements for that application. Um, and it has taken a lot of time for, for uh, within OpenStack environment to, uh, to mature the neutron capabilities and offload neutron to uh, network constructs so that we can achieve um, scalable and resilient OpenStack deployment. And so there are two networking models um, available. One is uh, uh, what is called an overlay underlay networking model. And as uh, we can see that when we think about a network, um, there are two components to the network. There's a virtual network, which is in the host, in the server, and then there is a physical network, which connects the racks to each other and allows interaction to outside systems. And so an overlay-underlay um, paradigm essentially builds two networks, a network of virtual switches um, amongst the hosts, the servers, and create a network leveraging uh, some sort of a tunneling technology. VXLAN is a very popular uh, tunneling technology. And it runs these tunnels amongst virtual switches over a physical underlay network. Uh, so the underlay network is purely an IP network. It pushes packets. And um, um, an overlay network is where the, uh, the intelligence resides. The other option is a a cohesive network or a single network that consists of both the physical network, a physical fabric, leaf spine fabric, and the virtual network operating as a single um, logical entity and provisioned uh, logically, provisioned uh, uh, and managed as a single logical entity. So the difference is, is sort of highlighted in the table, and, and there are flavors of both uh, that are there, but essentially, you know, with overlay underlay, you would manage two, two networks. Um, often there are two different teams, a cloud team and a networking team. Um, and um, tunneling requires uh, that it occurs on the host. Uh, and oftentimes, there is a performance penalty to that. Um, people have sort of talked about, what about the visibility gap between overlay and underlay? Does the underlay uh, folks who manage the physical network, do they have the visibility to the traffic that is traversing on, on top of the network uh, through the through the virtual uh, environment, and of course there is a, a cost of you know paying for overlay and paying for underlay. On the case of uh, on the side of unified, um, you know it's one network, so the the experience remains essentially very similar to how you would operate um, a networking environment. Uh, typically, one team, either a cloud team or a networking team, can manage the entire uh, environment. Uh, you know one can continue to leverage the, uh, the uh, normal uh, networking constructs, isolation mechanisms. So, so today's servers already provide optimizations for those. So there's no additional 
um, capabilities required. Um, and the instrumentation and, and um, uh, serviceability tools to troubleshoot can, can also be leveraged. Of course, they have to be applicable to both physical and virtual environment. And certainly, it's, it's, it's you know, one, one place you would go to, to build your network. So with that, let's kind of jump into um, uh, what, how the solution would look like. And then we will get through the technical details of how the solution is built. So I wanted to just sort of give as a, as a reference point, you know, how would one build uh, an environment for OpenStack? And what we will see is that the same exact environment or uh, deployment model can be replicated um, with, with minor modifications to a multi-orchestrated uh, container environment. And so um, what Bigswitch provides is a uh, Big Cloud fabric, which is a leaf pine fabric, and also extends to a virtual environment through a, a controller managed virtual switch uh, in, uh, in KVM hypervisor. And so, um, this, this network uh, of physical network consisting of leaf pine uh, switches, the switches are open networking switches, so they can be, um, you know, purchased from, uh, you have a choice of vendors uh, to purchase uh, open networking switches, load the, uh, uh, the operating system, uh, extend the, the network to virtual switches, uh, um, specifically denoted as switch light VX, and all of this environment is managed through a, an SDN controller. So it's, a, it's an SDN-based fabric running on open networking switches. Um, so with the Big Cloud Fabric Controller, um, you know, the entire uh, system operates as one logical switch. And you would manage it as a, as a, as a single entity or, or redundant entity for, for uh, availability. And uh, um, it's completely zero touch. One never has to log into any switch uh, ever you would manage everything through the controller. There is uh, uh, no routing protocols or switching spanning tree protocols running in the fabric. Everything is, uh, is it, it, it's, it's all running in the controller, so uh, there is no, um, so it's a very uh, sort of highly scale out uh, fabric environment consisting of physical and virtual switches. In OpenStack, what we have done is we have added a Neutron plugin uh, to automate networking to bring visibility across, um, you know, virtual switch to virtual switch communication uh, for VM to VM troubleshooting in OpenStack environment, integrated into Red Hat and Mirantis. So we get the benefit of scale, resiliency, operating as a zero touch, very simple um, network. You can insert layer four through seven services such as firewall, load balancing, and you get full visibility uh, in terms of troubleshooting. One can extend this environment even into a tenant uh, self-service portal. Uh, in, in the case of Verizon, it's uh, in the case of um, um, OpenStack, it is Horizon uh, dashboard, and one can, one can uh, expose uh, key fabric capabilities such as troubleshooting directly to the trend. So the key here is uh, applying a Neutron plugin that interacts with uh, Big Cloud Fabric. Now let's uh, move to containers and what happens in the containerized environment. So you can see that diagram remains almost exactly identical. What changes is uh, now what are the container environments? Well, we have a Docker environment, um, you have Kubernetes orchestration, uh, Docker would have Swarm, uh, there is uh, Marathon, in, uh, in Mesosphere and others, um, Red Hat OpenShift, one would simply need a container agent um, provided by a Big Switch, uh, which interacts with Big Cloud Fabric, and a plugin on the host, which is shown at the bottom in orange, um, which is deployed on the host. And by simply adding these two capabilities, uh, one is now able to get all of the benefits that we talked about, which is a zero-touch fabric, um, operating as a logical switch, a single unified network across physical and virtual environments, uh, full visibility from container to container um, across the physical and virtual fabric, um, and full network automation. When a container is deployed, the uh, network segment to which it belongs is automatically configured on the virtual switches 
and the physical switches. So um, now the network, you know, operates at the speed of containers. Um, containers uh, endpoints are visible in the controller, so it's very easy to troubleshoot. Um, even the hosts are detected, and it's a very scale-out model. When you connect the host, there is no um, configuration required. The uh, top of rack switches, when the links are connected between the server and top of rack switch or lead switch, they're automatically configured. So the entire experience of a, a what a containers demand from the network uh, can now be provided with uh, uh, with BitCloud Fabric as uh, um, a network for physical and, and virtual environments. All of this is visible. Oftentimes, everything may work, and you may have a security policy that is dropping the traffic. And so it's very important to have that visibility across both the logical environment and the physical environment. And you know, there's built-in analytics so that one can see um, the, the container environment, the endpoints, uh, container's name, its uh, network constructs, such as MAC and IP addresses, which we switch do they belong to, which segment do they belong to, um, how are they attaching to the host and have, when they have detached from the host. All of this is recorded in the Fabric Analytics of BitCloud Fabric and is available at a click of a button. Um, and you can have the full, full uh, histogram and time series of, uh, uh, of what has happened and one can actually replay uh, and see what happened um, in, to, to in the morning. Is it a network issue or something else? And finally, um, you know, with, uh, as, as we all know, network is a really a resource. And uh, that resource means it has to be shared across a variety of environments. And uh, these environments uh, uh, can have different orchestrators. So one of the of a very important capability of the Cloud Fabric and its controller is that it can connect to multiple orchestration systems. So as sort of shown in this diagram here, you know, a single fabric with its cluster of controllers, uh, a part of it, which we call a, a virtual pod or a vPod, can, can be allocated for um, container environment provided through Mesosphere, uh, another one with Docker Swarm orchestration, another one could be Kubernetes. And by the way, the same network fabric, th these are large fabrics that can have, you know, many hundreds of, of, uh, of hosts, up to a few thousand hosts. And so uh, you may have some, um, some host associated to VMware environment, OpenStack environment, um, VMware NSX environment. All of this uh, is, is available uh, through this concept or capability, which we call virtual pods or logical pods, which are carved, carved out as isolated entities um, within a common shared fabric infrastructure. And this is great for uh, you know, when developing applications which need to work across multiple versions, multiple um, orchestrations. Um, one does not need to build you know, isolated siloed environments, uh, which can be very costly and very hard to, to manage. One can, one can bring that capability uh, on a shared infrastructure across multiple containers. So with that um, overview and background, I'm going to hand it over to Sarath, who will go through the technical details of how um, the automation and, and capabilities are integrated through uh, Big Cloud Fabric. Sarath? Thank you, Prashant. Hey, morning, guys. Uh, I'm Sharath Kumar, and I'll be talking to you guys about the Big Cloud Fabric uh, container plugin architecture. In the last couple of years, we've seen tremendous growth in the container ecosystem. We've seen that the customers have a variety of options of container orchestrators as well as container engines to choose from. In this slide, we have highlighted some of the prominent players in this domain. So from Docker, we have the Swarm orchestrator, which runs on the Docker engine. Kubernetes has an option of running on Docker or Rocket. Marathon from Mesosphere runs on Mesos Containerizer or the Docker engine. OpenShift, which is from Red Hat, is, it also runs on the Docker engine. And finally, we have Tectonic from the Core OS guys, which runs purely on Rocket. Now, in this slide, I'll be highlighting how the container networking stack looks like in the solution that we provide from BigSwitch. 
here from the physical aspect we have the leaf and spine switches which are bare metal I mean which are, which are white box or bright box switches provided by either Dell or Acton and we have the BCF controllers that uh, program the whole SDN fabric and we have bare metal uh, we have bare metal hosts on which we have the virtual switch running which is provided by big switch networks as well these switches are also programmed by our SDN controller and for the container point of view, we support all orchestrators like Docker, Kubernetes, or Marathon from Mesosphere. And then for plugging all of this, we have a few components that are highlighted in the star symbol here. So we have an agent that runs on the container orchestrator masters, and we have plugins that are running on the bare metal hosts themselves. Now, our solution supports the following container plugin models today. Uh, our first plugin implements the CNI specifications. CNI is based, I mean, CNI based plugin models is used by Kubernetes and Mesosphere today. Here, what happens is that the orchestrator talks to the Docker runtime to ask it to spawn a specific container at any time, and then it directly invokes the CNI plugin. The CNI plugin takes care of the IPAM requirements of the newly spawned container, as well as plumbs the container into the fabric. Uh, the second plugin that we have implemented is based off libnetwork that is used by Docker and Docker Swarm. Here it's a little different where the Docker runtime directly invokes the plugin when it is orchestrating the container itself. Again, the plugin here does a similar functionality of providing IPAM as well as plumbing it into the fabric. Now, over here, I'll talk about the various components that are involved in our solution. On the left-hand side, we have the very familiar Kubernetes components. On the master node, we have the Kubernetes API server, scheduler, controller, and the HD services running. And on the agent node, we have kubelet and kubeproxy services. We also have the Docker engine running and Linux bridge or a vendor plugin. Now, with the integration with BigCloud Fabric, we have a few additional components that have been highlighted in blue here. The first one is the BCF agent that runs on all the master nodes. The agent interacts with the BCF controller to notify it about any container endpoint that needs to be added or removed from the fabric. The agent runs on every single master node and they participate in leader election to determine who becomes the master and the others then run in standby mode. This gives high availability and resiliency from an agent point of view as well. And on the node, what we have is that we have switch layer, which runs on top of the OVS kernel. And we have the BCF container plugin. The role of the plugin is to attach all the spawn containers on that specific node into the virtual switch that runs on that node. With this, I'll hand it over to Ganapati to talk about the deployment workflow as well as the demo. Sure. Uh, thanks, Sharath, uh, uh, for talking about the, the internal architecture of our uh, container plugin. So now, um, to put all together, uh, how to deploy this BCF integration uh, in a in a, a container orchestration cluster? So I'm walking uh, walking you through that uh, as part of uh, my next 10 minutes. Uh, the first thing uh, in any deployment is uh, you need to know uh, what is the deployment workflow. The first thing is uh, uh, to deploy the big cloud fabric, which is the uh, leaf spine uh, with cloth uh, fabric, which is managed by big cloud fabric controller, uh, where uh, you would have all the container cluster nodes uh, connected physically to the leaf switches. Then the second would be to deploy the container cluster uh, of your choice uh, of orchestration. It could be Kubernetes, methods. Uh, or OpenShift or Docker Swarm. Then once you deploy that, uh, then the last step would be to connect these two uh, by having a BCF integration component, uh, which are uh, switch light virtual uh, on all the cluster nodes. Then you would have a container, BCF container plugin and agent, uh, which can be streamlined uh, from the deployment perspective uh, using Ansible playbook. So from the entire uh, solution integration benefits, uh, the first thing is the, the deployment workflow which is streamlined uh, using our Ansible uh, playbook. Uh, in minutes you can deploy uh, all the integration components on the cluster nodes. 
including agent and the plugins and the switch, uh, switch light virtual. And once you install it, uh, as Prashant mentioned, we auto deleted all the cluster nodes and form link aggregation uh, towards the server from the physical leaf switches. Entire uh, thing is automated. Uh, there is no manual configuration required to provision or add cluster nodes to the physical fabric. Entire thing is automated. No user error uh, in this case. Everything is automated. And the third thing is uh, once you have uh, all the virtual switches installed. Uh, now you have a single pane of glass for physical, virtual, and container networking. Essentially, it makes uh, administrators' life simpler uh, for monitoring and troubleshoot uh, entire uh, networking for containers. Those are the key, uh, key benefits uh, uh, you would see as part of the integration. So now, uh, once you have a setup ready to deploy your application. Uh, now you can use uh, the container orchestration uh, to deploy your uh, distributed application uh, using uh, BCF for uh, the networking. So the workflow would be uh, the you use uh, the master node uh, to uh, deploy your application. Uh, once you uh, Kubernetes, in this case I'm using Kubernetes, it orchestrates uh, all the container parts on all the cluster nodes. Uh, in the in the under the, under the hood, uh, BCF plugin will uh, take care of container networking. Uh, what it means is it would manage IP address uh, for containers. Uh, it also uh, attaches uh, containers to the virtual switch. Then also it configures the BCF agent would configure Big Cloud Fabric Controller uh, for all the networking needs, which segment it belongs, where the attachment point is, and all those things. Then finally. Uh, you can leverage our test path and fabric analytics uh, to uh, provide the, the monitoring and uh, the troubleshooting for the container network, network uh, as Prashant uh, alluded earlier. So with that, uh, let me show you the demo uh, to uh, how you deploy this uh, entire uh, solution uh, using our uh, Ansible the playbook and also uh, some of the operational benefits you would get uh, out of this uh, integration. So I'll start with the, uh, the deployment workflow for our BCF integration component uh, on our existing uh, Big Cloud Fabric and the Kubernetes cluster uh, using the Ansible uh, playbook. This is uh, Big Cloud Fabric controller. And if you go to the Fabric view, as you can see, we have a leaf spine based uh, uh, topology. Then we have uh, the virtual switch yeah, virtual switch uh, at the bottom of, bottom of the screen. Uh, however, we do not have any virtual switch currently, given we haven't installed uh, BCF integration component yet. We will do it uh, as part of the demo and show how we dynamically detect that. And regarding the configuration, there is no uh, tenants configured yet. Uh, similarly, there are no container endpoints uh, on the physical fabric, given we haven't. Uh, uh, deployed any application uh, on the fabric. And these are the Kubernetes uh, cluster nodes. Uh, on the left, I have uh, a master node. On the right, I have uh, the worker nodes, two worker nodes I have. And to deploy uh, Ansible, uh, to deploy the VCF integration component, we use Ansible Playbook, as I mentioned earlier. An Ansible playbook uh, would use a set of uh, configuration uh, ML file uh, to deploy the integration components. The first one is the host.ml file. Essentially, uh, it provides uh, the, the nodes you have and the role associated with it. In this case, master and the worker nodes. Then there is a, a the where uh, YAML file essentially it has to have all the BCF related information, including uh, the switch light virtual uplinks, uh, the control plane CIDA subnet needs to be used. Then at the bottom of the, that file, we have the BCF information, essentially the controller IP credentials, the tenant name to be used, uh, the segments and uh, IP subnet associated with it. And uh, this subnet would be used uh, by our plugin uh, to provide the IP address to the, the containers whenever it is spawned.
So now, uh, using this ML file, we would do uh, installation of our uh, in the integration uh, by calling out this uh, ML file as part of Ansible playbook to deploy uh, the all the integration components. It just has type in uh, Ansible playbook with this uh, ML file as a input to this. Essentially, this would deploy uh, mainly three. Uh, integration component. First one is switch light virtual which will go on all the cluster nodes and it deploy a VCF agent on the master node and also it deploys VCF plugin all the, on all the cluster nodes. It's very simple to deploy. Uh, it takes just few minutes to deploy uh, the integration components. Even if you have hundreds of nodes, it should not take more than a few minutes uh, using our Ansible playbook. Now as you can see, uh, now uh, we come back to the BCF control fabric page. As you can see, now we have three virtual switches uh, uh, auto-detected. Uh, these are the three nodes we have in our uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this, is a, this one is the master node. Uh, this is the other uh, worker nodes, Docker 1 and Docker 2. Now if you go to uh, the logical uh, the tenant configuration, it's already populated with uh, the segment and the IP uh, associated with the, that particular segment. And this segment maps to Kubernetes namespace uh, for the networking. Uh, if you want to have additional uh, segment, you can have that depending on your application requirement. And this is the endpoint table for containers. Currently, we do not have any application running, so that's why there is no endpoint. We'll run some application and come back here and to see uh, the details. Okay, now setup is ready. Now let's uh, deploy the application uh, using Kubernetes. Uh, before that, just to uh, check the current environment, uh, two nodes we have. Then we, there are no pods currently deployed. This is the Kubernetes pods. Then there are no services, uh, application services currently. Uh, in Kubernetes, you would uh, uh, use the ML file uh, to deploy the application. I am planning to use two-tier application in Guestbook app. Uh, to deploy it. This has a front end, uh, web front end, and it has a uh, Redis uh, back end for a database. Uh, as you can see, uh, it, uh, this particular YAML file defines all the services. The back end uh, Redis, the Redis slave, number of uh, replicas of that particular service, in this case two. Based on your environment, you can scale up or down uh, your uh, individual services uh, using this, uh, the replicas, uh, changing the replicas number. And finally, this is the front end. Uh, essentially, it's uh, service on port 80, and in the three uh, instance of this particular service. Now, let's uh, deploy this uh, using our uh, the Kubernetes orchestration, which essentially uh, spawns all the containers uh, based on the uh, based on the services uh, mentioned in the ML file. Before going there, let's do a, a watch on um, the containers spawned on the the worker nodes using Docker PS. And on the master node, let's uh, do kubectl create and with the, the ML file which we just uh, showed. Essentially now, as soon as you uh, hit that, uh, you would, uh, the uh, Kubernetes would create the containers on the worker nodes and also create the services associated with it. And also, as you can see, all the containers are spawned on the worker nodes. In the back end, the back end, the VCF plugin would uh, do the networking uh, for these containers, which means uh, it uh, gives the IP address, uh, the virtual switch where it is uh, hosted, and uh, other information is visible from the VCF controller, as you can see on the screen. Name, IP, and MAC, where it is physically hosted. In this case, it's hosted on Docker 1 or Docker 2. What is the VNIC information? All details are available uh, on the VCF controller. So this is, uh, you get a visibility from container uh, uh, which is attached to our virtual switch. So the finally I would like to show the visibility and troubleshooting uh, aspect of container networking. Uh, essentially uh, we, uh, you can use the test path and fabric analytics to get uh, a visibility into the container networking. Uh, for the test path I would use uh, one of the front end uh, containers. Uh, as a source endpoint, 
and I would use uh, backend uh, Redis master as a uh, other uh, destination endpoint uh, to show how uh, valuable this particular tool to debug any uh, networking issues for the containers. In couple of clicks, you would get both logical and physical path associated with this particular source and destination endpoint. So it becomes uh, very easy to debug any uh, communication issues between the containers. You just pick those uh, container endpoints and then just click on the simulate. Essentially, it provides the logical path. Again, the policies, if you have any policies, it will show, just like Prashant mentioned earlier, and the physical path in this case, it is uh, on the Docker 1 host, uh, and the destination container is on the Docker 2 host, which is uh, connected to the Rack 2. So now, uh, so the fabric analytics is the other uh, thing which gives you the historic uh, uh, report of all the net, uh, container networking events uh, for a different orchestration. So we have a, a dashboard uh, specific to the containers. Uh, if you click on it, it would give you the details about the container networking. If you have multiple orchestration, it would give a, a separate uh, the separate the tab for each of these uh, container orchestration. Uh, and it would give a historic way we can go back in time uh, to uh, see the, all the container networking events, uh, IP, MAC, when it got spawned, uh, where this was hosted, uh, which rack it is, all those information is available uh, right on the screen uh, for uh, monitoring as well as the debugging. Uh, that's what I had as part of the demo. Uh, just to summarize, uh, we showed the, the deployment workflow, which is uh, made very simple uh, using our Ansible uh, playbook. And also, we provide operational uh, simplicity uh, we bring in through our integration for container networking. With that, I will hand it over to Prashant. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Tantadeh. So we have a couple of questions uh, that we can, uh, we can address here. Uh, so, so that's, uh, first question, would the uh, experience, networking experience be different uh, if you have different uh, container environments, let's say, uh, you know, Docker Swarm versus Kubernetes, uh, Mesosphere, uh, so on? Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's a good question. So uh, the way we have it is that the experience for the end user would be seamless regardless of which, uh, which orchestration engine he'll be using. Just like in OpenStack, is they don't know what's happening behind the scenes with the ML2 plugin that we have. Likewise, with the orchestration, regardless of what he's using, the uh, agent that's running on the masters, as well as the plugins running on the nodes, will make it completely seamless that the uh, user end user doesn't need to worry about it or debug it. Yeah. Another question for you, sir. Uh, you know, you talked about uh, vSwitch. So, uh, does the vSwitch uh, of this, uh, you know, single physical virtual network environment. Does it require any special Linux kernel dependency or distribution? Yeah, that's that's another interesting question that we get asked quite a lot. So uh, we just leverage the basic OBS uh, kernel that is there on the in Linux already. So there's no other additional dependencies that we need to get the uh, Switchlite VX running on the bare metal hosts. Perfect. Um, and let's see, we have one more. Uh, what, Gantati, what is uh, the scale of the fabric in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, number of uh, uh, leaf and spine switches it can, can have, number of end nodes it can support? Sure. Yeah, I mean, BCS scale, uh, it all depends on your requirement. Uh, you can go up to, uh, I mean, 128 uh, leaf switches. Uh, from the endpoint perspective, you can go up to 48k uh, endpoints, uh, and it all depends on your uh, requirement. And entire thing is managed by a big cloud fabric uh, controller. That's a single pane of glass, and you can leverage all of the the troubleshooting tool you have, even for that 128 leaf uh, fabric, which is thousands of uh, servers uh, we are talking about here. Uh, perfect. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, Judy, hand it over to you. Great. I think uh, this has been a wonderful uh, discussion around containers and our capabilities. Um, the questions asked by the audience are, are great. There are a couple more. Um, 
uh, coming in, and I'm wondering, uh, do we want to take those now? Uh, yeah, you can uh, call it out. Do you want cool. to call them? Okay. Out? Yes, absolutely, I will. So uh, one from Anton um, says, uh, as I understand, the solution doesn't use overlay networking. Does service function chaining use traffic steering technique based on open flow rules? Um, so um, yes, the solution is uh, doesn't leverage overlay. It uh, it is a uh, a single network across physical and virtual. Uh, it uh, has built-in service chaining so that the one is able to steer traffic to layer pool through seven services, such as the uh, firewall, for example. Um, the rules are, are built into the, uh, the fabric and the controller itself, and uh, if there is a specific interest, we can, um, we can go over that as a separate conversation. So feel free to send us a note, and we'd be happy to uh, drill down on, on how service chaining uh, occurs within the fabric. Perfect. Perfect. Um, good. And as a reminder here, if you have uh, other questions for our presenters today or want to speak with one of our experts, please uh, send us a message at info at bigswitch.com. Uh, we uh, are, are often uh, asked for how people can easily get started with our solution. We make it super easy for you to get started with Big Switch. With our, uh, with our labs environment. Uh, we have this on the web at bigswitch.com. And Big Switch Labs, BSN Labs, you can experience Big Switch Networks bare metal SDN solutions firsthand right from your laptop. Um, all of the modules are uh, organized in the labs environment and give you basically step-by-step -step experience through Big Cloud Fabric and Big Monitoring Fabric. We believe there's no better way to learn about our products or technologies than to take them for a test drive. This is a free, online, real-time access to our SDN Fabric product, products. Again, labs.bigswitch.com. And there is a handout available in the handout section uh, with more detail. All of our past webinars, including this one, are posted online. And you can get to those by clicking on one of the green buttons on the home page. Please mark your calendar for our next, uh, our next event, which is Wednesday, December 14th at 10 a.m. And this webinar is focused on big monitoring fabric. Lots of uh, special updates for you, so mark your calendars today. Uh, watch your emails for registration details. Or you can visit our website, again, at bigswitch.com slash webinars to register. That concludes our presentation for today. I want to thank Prashant Ganapathy and Saras for their expertise in walking us through the presentation. Um, we will, uh, again, if you have questions, head over to our website or send us an email at info at bigswitch.com. Thanks so much, and have a great rest of your day.